You'll do it over and over again, not just in the church house, but in your car, yes. in your living room, yes. at yes. your workplace. Hello, somebody. Yes. You want to worship them anywhere. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 God. We thank you for your presence, Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Would you pray right now for Brother Alex is on his way to Alaska. He is getting married this Saturday. Amen. Amen. Pray also for Brother Dylan, Jess, and Sister Rachel that's leaving tomorrow yes. to be a part of that ceremony. And God would keep them. Amen. And be a blessing in Jesus to that name, church yes. and that great event. Would you pray right now, Father? Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we release your power and your comfort. We release your angels to lead and guide, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise. Amen and amen. Clap your hands to him with you. Praise God. of the Lord tomorrow, Friday at 7 p.m. over at the Orange Church. Uh, we will be joining them for our prayer summit at 7 p.m. There will be refreshments at the gym, and it will start at 7.30. I want to encourage you to be a part of that. That is a wonderful time to be together and know how to pray. How many of you, many of you want to know how to pray? To really know how to touch heaven. Yes, Amen. Not just when you need it, but a constant flow of the presence of God. Also, Saturday, right here at 6.30 p.m., Section 3, youth will be here at the church youth service, Section 3. I want to ask the ushers, the AV team, to help out and be a blessing to our youth group. Amen. Also, the connect groups on Monday the 24th and Saturday the 29th over at uh, Lake Forest in RSM. God is doing and using the connect groups to move. Amen. And I want to ask you if you're not part of it, be a part of it. I want to ask you if God begins to deal with you to start one in your home. Amen. Start one at a coffee place. Start one anywhere. Someone say anyway. Amen. Amen. And we want to pray for that as well in Jesus' name, along with our outreach at Irvine Spectrum on the 28th. Uh, I know you're seated, but would you pray for this right now that God would use it, all of it? To, amen. Designed to plant the seed of the world. Uh, all of it designed. Uh, amen. That we may be able to go into the field. Uh, and work for the Lord Jesus Christ, fellow laborers with Him. Would you pray sincerely in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus, grace it with your presence, O God. Move us, you have, O Lord. Fill people with the Holy Ghost. Lord, let your word be planted in their hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Just looking ahead in the month of March, just want to give you a heads up that we will take a day in March to pray as a church. Someone say as a church. As a church. We are joining with other churches, and this is what we're going to pray for. We're going to pray for the will of God for our nation. The will of God for our nation. We're not praying for one party or another. We're not Republicans nor Democrats. We are Christians. And the Bible says that we need to pray for those that are in authority. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but the U.S. has turned the page and there's no turning back. More likely, there is at least a 40% chance that the next president can or might be or maybe not a socialist. That's never happened in our history. Mm. And if there's any time that you and I need to be engaged in prayer, for our nation, it is the time now. I said, it's the time now. We need to shake ourselves from complacency. I feel a prayer coming. Hallelujah. Would you pray right now according to the leading? 
of the Holy Ghost for our nation, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, this is the place that you called us to labor, oh God. And Lord, you said that we would pray for those that are in authority, oh Lord. And if those are righteous, oh God, oh, would be power, oh Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for your will. We pray for your will in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna hear a little bit more about that. But we're gonna dedicate a day of prayer and fasting. We're gonna make up a sign-up sheet to pray. We're gonna endeavor to have a 24-hour prayer chain. It'll be hour, one-hour increments. And you can sign up what hour you want to pray for. And we're going to believe that, that God's going to move on our nation. Amen? Amen. And we're going to be doing that until November. Amen. Until the election. Amen. Amen. And we're joining other churches in our movement and our fellowship that are doing the same. And I think it is the will of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to hand out these booklets to you. I think there's enough for everybody. And the ones up here, because we're going to study tonight how to teach the Word. And I want to encourage you tonight after service to get one of these and pray that God will lead you to teach someone the Word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. It is a $2 investment as we have studied. If you were not here, we studied Into His Marvelous Light. It's on the website. Uh, it's on Facebook. It's on YouTube, I think, as well. Uh, just, just go and on the web online and uh, catch up on how to, to, to teach Into His Marvelous Light. But tonight, and perhaps if we don't finish tonight, the succeeding Wednesdays, we are going to study and teach together, some say together, yeah. how to plant the word of the Lord. How many of you love the word of the Lord? Amen. How many really love the word of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Paul wrote to Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, excuse me, 4, verse 2, says, preach the word. Some say, preach the word. Preach the word. Now, this is not just for preachers. To preach means to herald. Some say herald. I know we don't use that anymore. Probably during Christmas, harp, the herald angels sing. Uh, or to proclaim. All of us can proclaim the word of God. Amen? Yeah. Preach the word. Be ready. Whether you feel like it or not. Amen? Yeah. In other words, don't let your emotions get in the way. Hello, somebody. Amen. But we, we come to church whether we feel like it or not. It's not dependent on our feeling. Be ready in season, out of season. And here's what you need to do as you teach the word. You've got to convince. Amen? Yes. You're not teaching just to teach. You are teaching to lead people to act in obedience to the word of God. Right. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Convince, rebuke. You know what that means, right? Okay. We'll be stronger than correction. Right. Rebuke. Exhort to lift somebody up, to encourage somebody with all long suffering and teaching. Amen? Right, right. So that word is for us. That's why we're studying to teach the word of God. I believe during the judgment that God's going to ask each and every one of us, what did you do with the treasure I gave right. you? Have you ever thought about that? We're just going to cruise in. The Bible says we're going to all stand before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and one of the things that he's going to ask us is, what did you do with the talent that I gave you? What did you do with the treasure of the word that I gave you? What, did you hold it in or did you plant it? Is, where's my increase of my word? That's what God is going to expect. So Jesus said that we should all go. Someone say go. Uh, it's an action. I thank God for those of you that are faithful coming to the house of God. 
but this is where we worship together, this is where we get encouraged, and this is where we get equipped yeah. to be sent into the harvest. Yeah. Amen? Right, right. We are not spectators, we are not buying into the 21st century church type of way where people come and they hear a preacher and they leave without being involved or doing anything about the Word of God. Right, right. Hello, somebody. Right. You have to teach. Where do you find that? In Matthew 28, 20. Everybody knows Matthew 28, 19. But few read verse 20. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And so if you would take your booklet and if you have a pen, we're going to have to be take notes. Uh, we're going to circle some things. Uh, if you need a pen, we have a pen. Amen. Anybody need a pen? It's ten dollars on the table. I actually don't bring a pen anymore. It's amazing. We live in such a digital world that we don't have pens. But the, the booklet right there, do you, do you notice the title? Can you read the title and say the title out loud? Place prepared for you. A place prepared for you. Isn't that nice? Kind of like a reservation. Right? So the title of our Bible study that we're studying on how to teach is a place prepared for you. And the scripture comes from John 14, 1 to 3. Let, your not, let not your heart be troubled. Amen? Some of you can relate that sometimes our heart is troubled. I know some people, I've heard one preacher said that, well, mansion just means, uh, you know, a, a space or like a, a hotel room or an apartment. That's, that's one uh, person's uh, interpretation. It would be sad, especially for evangelists that have, you know, given their lives 30 years going from hotel room to hotel room only to get to heaven and stay in there. Right. I don't think that's what it means. I don't think God lacks real estate. Right. Hallelujah. You look at the heaven of heavens and it's a great expanse. And so God is expressing to you and I that he is preparing for us an abode that is big enough for you to be in for eternity. Amen. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus was looking ahead of his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension to heaven. And you know what he's doing up in heaven? He's building. Amen? He's not just sitting on his throne doing nothing. He's building a mansion for you. Well, I thought you'd be encouraged by that. Especially in the real estate market of South Orange County. Let me try that again. Maybe in this section right here. God is preparing a mansion for you. Hallelujah. How about this section right here? God is preparing a mansion for you. Praise God. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And it's been gone for almost 2,000 years. Could you imagine a mansion in the building for you? You're not going to share with anybody else. We'll come visit, don't worry. But it's 2,000 years of building. I believe the angels are busy building. Praise God. Verse 3, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's talking about his second coming, his return to the earth. So this is encapsulating what the plan of God is in this two verses, three verses. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Sounds like eternity. Amen. Sounds like being with Jesus in heaven forever. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. God, I want to be with you forever. Lord, I want to be in your presence forever, God. Oh, how wonderful that would be. We get a little glimpse of it when we come together and worship. Amen. Oh, but how wonderful it would be to be in the presence of God forever. Yes. You wake up in it, you sleep in it. Well, we won't be sleeping. I thought Dylan would jump up and, and shout with that. He won't be sleeping. 
But you've had to. You won't be sleeping. Because you won't need to sleep. You don't need to eat either. But you can, and you will, because there's a marriage supper on the way. You eat for your pleasure. Hallelujah. Amen. That right there is worth going to heaven. Praise God. Amen. So open your booklet if you would for the first page. Of course, I want to encourage you if you teach this, that you get excited. Amen. Amen. Don't teach it like it's going to a funeral. Right. You're just going to get converted that way. Praise God. So the introduction right here, and you could read this as you teach, but you also interject your, your, your thought process as the Holy Ghost guides you. Amen? Yeah. And so here we go into the introduction of a place prepared for you. There was a man named Jesus Christ who was, in, who has, who was God, rather, manifested in the flesh. He so impacted the world that the calendar dating system was changed to B.C. before Christ, or A.D. in the year of our Lord, that's the meaning of A.D., to pivot around his life. Amen. It's very interesting that all the popular people that has lived and died in history, uh, some of them have been forgotten. You know, the younger kids probably don't know about the Beatles anymore, and the Who, and all the people and now in our day people still know about Jesus Christ right. hallelujah Amen. not only did Jesus do the miraculous while walking the earth but he allowed himself to be crucified for us right. he loved his creation that much the exciting news is that he rose from the dead yes. Amen and so as you're teaching this, you are setting an introduction right. how important Jesus is. Right. He is the most important person in history and in today's time. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he can do miraculous things. So you're, you're preaching Jesus or teaching Jesus unto him that number one, he died for us. Yeah. That he was crucified for us. And it's all motivated out of love. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Right. It's out of love. And the exciting news is that he did not stay in the grave. He right. rose from the dead. How do we know that? The word tells us in Acts chapter 1 verse 3. So Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Let's read this together. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. By many infallible orders, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So, how many days did Jesus stay on the earth after the resurrection? Forty days. He was alive. That would catch people's attention. If somebody that was dead stays in your house for forty days, I think you'd hang onto their every word that they say. Amen. And, and, and then also in 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of God. Right. God was manifest in the flesh. Who was manifest in the flesh? God. Who came in as into the world as a person? God. God, right? God. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God, that God. That God became a person. Yes. That's what it means. God was manifest in the flesh. Yes. It's not a second God. Right. Right. Hello? Right. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Here always run the Lord our God is not three. One. It's one Lord. Amen. Hello? Yes. Yes. It's no triune God. That's a paganistic right. type of worship. Right. Amen? One God. There's one God. His name is Jesus Christ. He is God. He is Son. He is the Holy Ghost, Isaiah 9, 6. Mm -hmm. right. Read it in your own time. That Jesus is both the Son and the Father, the everlasting Father. Yeah. So you, you got to get into the mindset of a Jew. A practicing Jew that believes in one God. Right. They still recite the Shema. When a child is born, Shema Israel, Adonai, Lehi, 
Here is the Lord God is one Lord. So God became a person. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Not a second person, but God himself yes. became a person justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. That encapsulates the saving process of Jesus Christ, who was <laughs> God that became a person. Right. Justified the spirit. Amen? That, that sinless blood. Angels looking at it. And he's preached to us, the Gentiles. Yeah. He's believed on even today in the world and then he rose again and, and is at the right hand of the Father, the Bible says. Right, right. But we all know that the right hand is symbolic of power and authority. Right. God is a spirit. Yes. There's no right or left or up or down with spirit. Amen? The Bible says that the heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool, that God is everywhere at the same time. Right. He is not confined to space like you and I, that I could say this is my right hand uh, and this is my left. God doesn't uh, live in this dimension. He is in eternity where time is. No more. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Jesus Christ, who is this God that became a person, made a promise to all who followed him in this life. He said, as we read in uh, John 14, 2 to 3, that he prepared a place for us. Yes. yes. That he is building a mansion for you. That where he is, you and I may be also. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody want to go to him? Amen. Praise God. It is a special promise for those who would obey his word. The invitation and the promise is for everyone. Some say everyone. everyone. But not everyone will make it. Right. Amen? Sure. That's the Bible. It says the uh, wide is the gate, and narrow is the way. Right. Amen? Wide is the gate that leads to destruction, narrow is the way that leads unto life, and few find it. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so this invitation is for everyone. God wants everyone to repent and be saved, but not everyone. But those of you that will find somebody that is hungry for the Word of God, uh, and as you pray for them, as you love them, that they would obey the Word of God so that when they die, they will go to heaven to a place prepared by God, not for the place prepared for the devil and his angels. Right. Amen? Amen? And so, this study shows us how to be ready. Amen? Yes. Ready for what? For his coming. For heaven. For death. Till you pass from this life to the next. Amen? Right. You want to be ready. Praise God. Kind of like you're getting ready for work. Right? I mean, have a routine. You get ready for work. Right. Yeah. You know, for, for, for like, I, I, I wake up at the last minute that I can <laughs> to maximize my sleep. I already laid out what I, it's just when I wake up, it's just automatic. I don't, I don't need to change, I pick my clothes, it's already, it's picked the night before. Uh, when I was younger, I had the same clothes for five days. I don't have to, I don't have to, to think, it's the same thing. I know some of them thought I never laundry my clothes, but man, it's just the same thing, you know. I, I didn't really care much what fashion is. Maybe I should do that again. <laughs> Praise God. That'll be awesome. Amen. But I think my wife won't like that. In Jesus. But it helps us to study. And here's some questions on your book that circle true or false. The world was so impacted by Jesus Christ that the yearly calendar was changed to BC and AD. True or false? True. True. Amen. Jesus showed himself alive. After he was crucified by many infallible proofs, being seen 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, true or false? True. true. Jesus said to those who followed him, I go to prepare a place for you. True or false? True. 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 Amen. And so here, as you're teaching uh, your prospective students, you're asking them and you're gauging if they're believing what you're teaching. 
if, you're, if they're believing what the scripture that you've read so far. Does that make sense? And, and so, what, what are you going to do if they say no? Explain it. Explain it. What did Paul tell Timothy? To what? The beginning scripture that we read. Be ready what? To preach the gospel. It's done in season, out of season, and then what? To convince. Convince. Exhort. Review. Are you are you awake tonight? <laughs> And so as you're teaching, you're not just going through the motions. No. Your purpose is to convince them this is heaven and hell. This is the most important thing you can ever do in your life. Amen? you believe that? Amen. This is the highest uh, thing that you can give yourself to. And so as you, if they say no, then you're going to have to dig in a little bit. Why, why don't you believe? Right. Mm. And, and maybe you go in another direction. Maybe the Bible study ends and you just discuss. Maybe they have a problem. And you work through them. Right. Maybe they believed God a long time ago. And they were let down. Mm -hmm. And you work with them. Right. What, what am I saying? As you teach either a place prepared for you or into a smart marvelous light or any other Bible study. You're actually trying to discern what the where that person is in God. Right. 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 That makes sense? Yes. yes. So that you can minister to them because everything that we will ever need in, both in this life and the life to come is found in the Bible. Yes. Right. And the Bible has to be relevant to their life. Right. Amen? Yes, it is old, but it is very much relevant. Yes. Amen? Yes. And so you're trying to as you're teaching, you're trying to discern where are they in their walk with God. Amen. Now let's talk about being born again. So this is page number two. So let me say page number two. That's true. And you see the heading there, right? What is the heading? Born again. What does again mean? Second time. Subsequent. The second time. What else? Another? How, how, what, how can it happen again? More than once. Right? For something to happen again, it has to occur one time. Right? That, that's what again means. Sing it again. <laughs> Sing it louder. Right? Meaning you... You sang before. You can't say again if you haven't done it one time. Make sense? Right. So born again. When were we born the first time? Natural birth. Physically, right? That was not a trick question. <laughs> you were born the first time. That's why you're here. Amen. And, and so to be born again, it's not the natural birth. It's a spiritual birth. Right. right. Make sense? Because some people will say, well, you know what, I was born again when the, uh, I was baptized and born again when the plasma of my mom, you know, broke, yeah. your water broke. And, and I was born with the spirit when, I, you know, the when air came into my lungs the first time and I cried as a baby. Oh. And, and what, what would you tell a person that would say that to you? No, and then what? You, remember, you're trying to convince them. No would be like, okay. That, most people won't be convinced. Take them to John chapter 3. Okay, John chapter 3. What would be like a good one liner? Oh, he was born again? He was born of spirit. What would you tell a person? Well, it can't be that first time that you're referring to the possible in the air because it has to happen the first time. We're going to happen again. Yeah. Amen? So, so then when they tell you, well, it's that air that I cried, and that, that the water breaking, and that's my baptism, you tell them, that's the first time. This is again. It can't be that. Because that's the first time. Make sense? So that's how you convince that person. Now, being born again, it may be hard for a person to understand that Jesus Christ 
has prepared a place for all those who follow him. Number follow him. The reason for this is that he is talking about spiritual concepts. It's not, it's not intellectual concept. It's not your, your, your intellect. Your, your spirit and along with your faith has to be involved. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. But the natural man or the physical man that was born the first time receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Amen? By the way, at any time if you have a question, just... Just ask, and then I'll, I'll do my best to answer it in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so, as as that's why you need to feel the person you're you're, you're teaching, because uh, you can't teach past blindness, right? I don't care how good a teacher you are, if they can't see, they can't see. I don't care how good a teacher you are, you can't teach past deafness. If they can't hear, you can't hear. And, and so you've got to work past that. Perhaps you need to spend more time praying for them, fasting for them, right? Do you love them enough to fast for them? Well, I want my kids to be saved. Well, how are you fasting for them? Well, no, I don't. At least not enough to push away from them. Donuts and, you know, hello? Oh, yeah, that, that spoke to somebody. Yeah. Yeah, the question a little bit from the table. In Jesus' name. Praise God. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> as, as you teach the Word of God, remember they're, they're spiritually understood. The natural man, the carnal man, is an enemy of the Word of God. It, it, to people, being born again is foolish. Amen? But, but you're planting the Word. Some say planting. Planting. So, so planting sometimes you might uh, bear fruit right away. Sometimes you might have to till the ground a little bit. Amen. So, just as un, an unborn, excuse me, just as an unborn child would not understand parents teaching it how to accept their love, care, food, and shelter until after it was born, the same is true in the spiritual. So to really understand, one must be born again spiritually so they can understand. Amen? How many of you could look back at your experience with, experience with God after you're born again with water and spirit? When you read the Word of God, you understood a little bit better. It came alive. Hallelujah. So let's look at what Jesus said to a man named, named Nicodemus about being born again the second time. This is John chapter 3, 3 to 7, 9, and 12. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see heaven. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot go to heaven. He cannot be saved. Right. Are you with me? Yes. Yep. That's what it means. The kingdom of God is heaven. Right. A king has a kingdom. And his kingdom is heaven. A king is over a geographical area. In this case, the king of kings, the lord of lords, uh, is over all. And especially his abode is in heaven. That's where he's preparing a place for us. Right. So Jesus is telling Nicodemus, who is, by the way, a lawyer... But he's seeing it through the natural eyes, not the spiritual. He's, Jesus is telling him, you have to be born again or you cannot see heaven. You cannot be saved. Right. Amen? Are you with me? Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? So how, what, what pers from what perspective is he coming from? Well, the natural, right? He's not thinking spiritual. Right. He said, how can a man be born? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? You know, he is really honest. But he is honestly just dumb. I mean, this is the most dumbest question. But at least the most sincere. He knows the answer to that, right? 
How can he enter the second time his brothers will be born? Jesus answered, now, now notice, the first time God gave a generalization about being born again. Now he sees the sincerity of this man. And so he gives him a little bit more details. Some say details. details. About what born again means. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of what? Water. Water. You know what water is, right? Yeah? Now I need one. Of and of the Spirit. Somebody, spirit. spirit. So water and spirit, a little bit more detail. He cannot enter. He changes the verb from seeing into entering into heaven. If you're not born of water and spirit, you cannot be saved. Amen. Yeah, sure. I didn't make this up. God's word. This is not. I understand this is not what traditional Christians in many many churches today teach. They teach you either be good. They teach you to be nice. Yeah. Don't kill anybody. <laughs> you know, be good to your fellow man. You'll be. You'll go to him. Let me hear that. Or most teach well. Just just accept the Lord as your personal savior. Can you show me in the Bible there, somewhere? It's got to be in there, right? For all these churches to teach. At least word for word, show me where the apostles and disciples told somebody that was asking how to be saved, that they said, accept the Lord as your personal sin. Surely it's there. Is it? What do they teach them? Remember, it's spiritually discerned. Amen? Except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's emphatic. There's no, oh, there's no wiggle room there. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's referring to your natural birth. That's why it can't be your plasma. It can't be your water. It can't be the air that goes into your lungs the first time as you cry. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, or don't be amazed that I said unto you, you must be born again. Right. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? If you could just feel a little bit of amazement mixed with a little irritation in the voice of Jesus. He said, if I told you earthly things, you believe not. How shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? <laughs> In other words, Jesus said, this is spiritually designed. For you to obey this, for you to receive this, for you to actually act upon this, you've got to realize these are spiritual concepts and principles. They are not deserved by your mind alone. Faith has to be born. Right. Amen? So here, Jesus lets us know we must be born again of what? Water. And spirit to what? To see or into the kingdom of God. Since it's impossible for God to lie, Hebrews 6, 1, 8. Somebody, you know, did a typo there. What is that? Since it's impossible for God to lie. Where are we at? 618? 618? Yeah, 618. I need to make a mental note to take that. I'm sorry, man. OCD is bothering me with all this It's 18. We claim his promises. So how is it possible to be born again? The gospel of Jesus Christ will show us. Luke 18, 27, and he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Would you just lift up your hands right now? Would you just thank God right now for the things that are impossible for you in your life that yes, is possible Jesus, with the again. Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing is impossible Jesus. to Him in Jesus' name. Jesus. Praise God. So let's continue on about being born again. John 5, 39. And so we're on page 2 towards the bottom of the page. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. For they are they which testify of me. Now, Realize if you're reading the King James Version, uh, it, it's, it's, the phraseology is different than our regular vernacular today. It doesn't mean that it, it, you, 
it does not give you eternal life. That's not what it means. It, it's, it's, it's emphatically saying the opposite with how you read it in modern day English. And they, how do we know that? Because the last sentence, and they are they which testify of me. So if you study or search the scripture, you will find out that as you obey it, you will have eternal life. Right. You'll be saved. And the Bible that you study and you search, testify to that fact that when you obey it, you will have eternal life. Yes. Amen? In other words, we want to make sure that we follow, so say follow, the plan Jesus left in his word so we can be prepared for the place he has for us. Yeah. And he lets us know the urgency to repent and believe. <clears throat> Amen? And, and so Mark chapter 1 verse 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe in the original Greek means to give oneself wholly to. Amen? Any question? So the Lord is saying that the first step to his kingdom is to repent. Make sense? Right. Repent is a military term. It means to turn around. To own up to your mistakes and your sins and to ask God for forgiveness and to go a different direction right. towards Him. Amen? That's okay. repentance. Amen. And the word, we've got to take it literally because Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words sure. shall not pass away. You are reading something that is eternal. Amen. You are studying th something that is eternal. It's not going to pass away, even in heaven. It's not going to pass away because God is His word. That makes sense? Read John 1, 1, it mirrors Genesis 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, or became a person, yes. and we have the other glory as only the begotten Son, and that's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is that Word, that God, in Genesis, and became a person in the New Testament. Amen? Amen. It's not a man, making himself a God, like the Jews accused him, but it is God making himself a man right. to save us. Yeah. Amen? Jesus. So, the first step is what? Yeah. Repentance. Right? Yeah. That's, we just read that the word. And repentance is a decision. Some say a decision. A decision. You have to decide to repent. Yeah. Right. And as you're teaching this person, you are convincing them leading them that they need number one salvation you are trying to discern where they're at uh, are, do they want to be saved uh, are, are they spiritually engaged uh, and, and you lead them to repentance mm -hmm. a made of mind we change our attitude and our mind and our actions about sin repentance starts first in your mind so it's in my mind. Amen. Your battle is not with another person. It's in them. Your battle is between your ears. Yeah. It's in your mind. Right. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 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 That you may prove what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. And so uh, uh, the repentance starts in the mind. Yeah. It, it changes our attitude. And then our actions follow, especially turning from sin. Inward changes show outwardly to others and ourselves, we have decided to follow Jesus and obey His word. That's repentance. Amen? Amen. Why do we need to repent? Because Romans 6.23 says, For the wages or the payment of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. So then the first step to being born again is what? Repenting. repenting and believing the gospel. The next step is being born again of water and of the Spirit. So I think we're going to close here in page 3. Uh, so we have questions. Certain. True or false. To see or enter into the kingdom of God, one must be born again of water and Spirit. True or false? True. True. Jesus said the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. True or false? True. True. 
Repentance is a change in our attitude, our mind, and our actions about sin. True or false? True. Amen. So now we are on page four. We've got a little time. And so I'm going to just just dip in a little bit. Uh, actually, two more. Yeah. Thank you. Search the scripture. Right there. We don't have to search the scriptures to see if we are going to have eternal life. False. Since heaven and earth shall pass away, but the words of Jesus will not pass away, this problem will follow his salvation plan. True. 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 Amen. Now, again, on page four. How to be born of war. I'm going to briefly touch on it. There are great examples. We don't have to be left wondering how to be born of war. It's not a mystery. Amen. The Bible interprets itself. It gives us examples because God wants us to understand Him, His Word, and He is His Word. Yeah. So there's great examples in the Bible. In Acts chapter 8, verse 30 to 31. And Philip ran thither, Philip the evangelist, to him, the eunuch, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? Now here is a good ingredient of somebody that can be a great candidate to be saved is humility. Right? right? He was asked. He, he's, he is a highest, uh, one of the ranking officer of Candace the Queen. In fact, yeah, I think it was part uh, uh, that keeps the treasury. This is a very prominent person. This is a person of, of high intelligence, uh, but he's reading the scripture in Isaiah. And Philip came to him and says, do you understand what you're reading? He said, I don't, I don't understand it. Unless somebody teach me. And so as you're teaching your students, you got to pray, God, give them an open mind. Yeah. Would you pray that right now? Would you pray for your prospective students? God, give them an open mind, Lord. Lord, give them a spirit of humility, oh God. That they can be taught, oh Lord. Lord, let them embrace it. The attitude of a know-it-all. That they know all scripture. Nobody knows all scripture but you, oh God. Somebody that says they know all scripture is the same as saying that they know all about God. In Jesus. So we say Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And so you'll, 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 you'll understand here in verse 35 to 39 what they were talking about. Because of the outcome. Right? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached who? Jesus. Jesus unto him. What did he preach about Jesus, you think? Maybe about him dying on the cross? Maybe about him resurrecting from the dead? Maybe about him being alive for 40 days? Amen. Amen. And as they went their way, they came unto a certain what? Water. Yeah. Water. Aren't you glad that the Lord made it easy? They came unto a certain water. Amen. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Now back up a little bit. He began at the same scripture and preached Jesus. You will realize that as he taught Jesus, as, as you're teaching your students, uh, you're teaching them about, about being born of water, which is the heading which is at the top of the page, of page four. You're leading them to be born of water because you, that's what Philip, Philip taught him. Yeah. Amen? Because if, they, if he didn't, he would not have concluded to be baptized. Right. So he taught him to be baptized. Here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? He is the Savior. He is the King. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to, to stand still. And they went down. Somebody say down. Yeah. Both into the water. That's how they baptized. They didn't sprinkle water on the forehead. They were buried him. In water. They went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and 
he baptized him, and they were come and, and they were come up out of the water. So they went into the water and they went out of the water. Amen? Amen. That's how they were baptized. Amen? Amen? So here we see one being born of water, baptized. The New Testament was originally written in the Greek before being translated into English. The Greek word for baptized is baptizo, which means to immerse, submerge, to make overwhelmed, fully wet. And that's what Jesus told us in Mark 16, 16. Mm -hmm. He that believeth, yeah. somebody say and, yeah. and, and is baptized, shall be, saved. shall be saved. Most people don't believe that. Right? They read it this way. He that believeth is saved. And if they want to, they can be baptized. That's not what Jesus said. Right. And is a conjunction giving importance uh, to the word preceding it and, and after it. Right. Amen? Like Jack and Jill went up the hill. Right? Not just Jack. Jill also. Everybody knows and. But for some reason, when they read scripture, they, they all of a sudden forget the conjunction in English. That they've studied nursery rhymes with. They just have a blindness. Remember, this is spiritually discerned. He that believeth, uh, believe what? The word of God, Jesus, baptism. At some point of preaching Jesus, Philip, to the eunuch, uh, they came to believing water baptism. Right. right? Because it's the same thing. See, there's no contradiction in the Bible. And if you interpret it in one way that contradicts the scripture, your interpretation is wrong, that is merely your opinion. It's like everyone knows, everybody has it, and nobody wants to do it. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He that believeth in is God. Yes? So we say, you cannot just merely believe and not act on what you believe. You cannot believe something that you don't act on. Amen? Uh -huh. Believing just in your mind is just a thought. That's not belief. You're just dreaming. Right? When you really believe something, you will do it. Yes. Right. Yes. I believe that I'm going to lose weight. Amen? Amen. You're going to see yourself right. with a physique. Right. Whatever it is. From 300 pounds to 250. Or 299. Celebrate incremental victories. Hello? I teach that to my kids. You know, celebrate little victories. You don't have to, you know, hey, I lost one pound. Hallelujah. You say, I just found it, so you're told. <laughs> but he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Here are some examples of people being baptized, born of water. What is said when they were baptized? And I promise I will uh, stop on this. Where are we? What page are we? Number four. Oh, we're still at four. Halfway. Halfway there. So Acts chapter two, verse thirty-seven, forty-one. And when they heard this, what did they hear? Peter preaching who? Jesus. Peter preaching about what? Do you think? That they were guilty of the blood. Yep. Right. Now they were heard this, they were what? They were pricked in their heart, they were convicted. Yep. And as you're teaching this, you pray God convict them yes. of their sin. Convict them of their need to have a Savior. And said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? It's an action now, it's faith in action. He didn't say, what shall we think about? He said, what shall we plan? Hello? He said, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal sin. Know what he says? He says, just be good, go to church. He said, what? Repent. And what? And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of the 
Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ. You can't find one baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's purely repeating the command. You didn't obey the command, you repeat, repeat it. Right? Feel like I tell Brother Jim, hey Brother Jim, let's fill the baptistry this Saturday because Brother Luke's going to get baptized Sunday. Right. And Brother Jim goes to the baptistry and he says, hey Brother Jim, let's fill the water, let's fill the baptistry with water this Saturday because Brother Luke is getting baptized this Sunday. And then he walks away. Did you obey it? Would I, would Sunday roll along and I'm looking for water and it's, there's no water, do you think I'll be happy that he obeyed it because he repeated the command? That makes sense? So if you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Son, you didn't obey the command, you merely repeated the phrase. Because the name of the Father is Jesus. This is where you believe in one God. The name of the Son is Jesus. Yes. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. That's in yes. the Bible. Yes. And so be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for what? Yes. The remission of sins. When you're baptized in Jesus' name, your sins are gone. They are remitted. They are blotted out. They are washed away. Hallelujah. And you shall, not maybe, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There's Amen. water yes. and there's spirit. Right. There's being born of water, baptism in Jesus' name. Yeah. Being born of the Spirit yeah. is the gift of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, some say it's for me. For me. Yes. And to your children, the next generation. Right. And to all that are afar of the succeeding generations, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Was he talking about salvation? Yes. Some people say, Well, he was, he was not really talking about salvation. Well, keep reading. Right. Because he actually did say, Save yourselves. So the act of baptism in Jesus' name, the act of receiving the Holy Ghost, the act of repenting saves you. Save yourselves from this untoward or twisted generation. The day that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them 3,000 souls. I'm looking for a 3,000 soul revival in South Orange County. Anybody want to believe me? Hallelujah. Do you believe that would you stand? I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to begin to thank God in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to spiritually discern how to be born again and what to do, oh God, and what it takes to be saved. Help us, Lord. Would you pray right now for your prospective students? Would you pray right now for people, your family perhaps? your husband, your wife, your children, to teach them the word of God that you have received. It is the greatest and the most important task that you have been given by God is to teach the word in Jesus' name, especially how to be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, that you have visited us and allowed us to obey this word. Now is our time. In our turn, to plant this word, the seed, to find somebody that would believe God, to find somebody, Lord, that will also be saved by obeying your word. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, yes, would you pray right now, pray for somebody, pray that God would lead you to somebody that's hungry. Pray for together and say, God, help me to teach it. Help me to believe it. Help me to be enveloped with love. For someone, oh God, that I can teach, Lord. Help me not to be ashamed. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Don't be afraid to teach them. Love them enough to teach them. Love them enough to pass for them. Lead us to the hungry, O oh Lord. Lead us to the
the first thing of God. Lead us to people, O oh Lord, that you are drawing even now. Prepare them. Right, Prepare their mind that they may spiritually discern your word. 